Hi, welcome back to Calculus. Today we're looking at section 8.1. It's going to be an integration technique for us. It's called integration by parts. So integration by parts is useful when we have a product inside our integral and there's really no good place to do any substitution. So for example, I have here the uh, indefinite integral of x sine x dx. There is no good place to put a substitution in here that is going to make this work. So what we want to do is we're going to use what's called integration by parts, and I'm putting a big box around here. The integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral v du. Basically what we're going to be looking to do is to assign one of these two pieces to be u, and one of them, along with the dx, will be our will be our dv. And what we want to pick, we want to pick a few things. We want it to make our long run, we want it to make our integral simpler. Okay? Um, and we want to pick something for v that has a very, very easy antiderivative because notice we just have v sitting here on this other side. So we want to pick something for our dv that has a very simple antiderivative. In this case, either x or sine x would make a good choice because they both have simple antiderivatives, but only one of them is going to make this integral look really, really nice. So let's go over here and I have the example worked out. So I chose to call u x. And now I did that because du is just 1 dx. And so if you look at our formula, the, that's going to immediately simplify this integral. Right, because this piece uh, that we're going to have on the other side is just going to be 1 dx. So I call x ux and du then was 1 dx. And so then dv, remember, I'm identifying a u and something that's already in the derivative that I'm going to have to take the antiderivative of. My dv here is the sine x dx. So if you take its antiderivative, you get a negative cosine x. So now I have all these pieces and I can go ahead and I'm going to plug them in here. Right, I brought that formula over here again. So u is x, v is negative cosine x, then we have minus the antiderivative of v, which was, oops, I put the wrong one there. Oh dear, I made a mistake. Let's try that again. There should be a v and negative cosine x, and then my du is 1 dx. So now when I take the antiderivative of negative cosine, I get a negative sine, and that's going to combine here to make a plus sine x. Be careful with those. With pillow bomb, that's not right. Um, no, this will be minus. The two negatives here make a minus, make a plus. You get a minus sine x. There we go. Be careful with those negative signs. So there we go. Again, your goal is to pick the dv to be something that has a re relatively simple antiderivative, so that because we're going to be using that, and then you hopefully will simplify this, this derivative for us when we take, or not the derivative, this integral. So let's do some more examples. All right, so here's a fun little example. Let's just take the antiderivative of natural log. Where's the product? Well, there isn't one. But the problem is, we don't have an antiderivative for natural log yet. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure this out. Um, I want u to be something that if I take its derivative, hopefully makes things life simpler. Because remember, du is going to go inside the new integral over there. So I chose u to be the natural log of x, and its derivative of that is 1 over x, dx. So what was my dv? If, if u is natural log, the only thing left is the dx. So I just call dv 1 dx. It's antiderivative to get us the v, and then it's just x. And this is going to work out really nice. So you can see I wrote down the integration by parts formula again. u times v minus integral of v du. u is the natural log of x. v is x minus the antiderivative of v, which again is x. And the u is 1 over x. And what's really nice, those x's reduce each other out. And now we just have the antiderivative of 1. So I have x natural log of x minus the antiderivative of 1 dx. Well, the antiderivative of 1 is x, so I get my minus x and the plus c. Let's do, I have two more examples.
Let's take a look at this one. This one is a doozy. As you can see, it took up basically all of this board that you can see. So let's take a look at it. And the antiderivative of x squared cosine x dx. So in the interest of u making my life simpler, I called u x squared, which meant du is 2x dx. So the power went down. That seems like a good thing. I called dv then the cosine x dx. Antiderivative of cosine is negative sine. So piecing it together, u times v, x squared times negative sine x, gave me negative x squared sine x, minus the integral of v, negative sine x, times du to the 2x dx. The two negatives made a plus, and I brought the 2x out front. So I have negative x squared sine x plus the antiderivative of 2x sine x dx. But unfortunately, we have to do integration by parts a second time. And so this could be a little bit annoying. Sometimes you have to do integration by parts more than once. And so that's what I did. I started all over. This is going to stay. This negative x squared sine x, that's done. It's out of the integral. So we don't have to worry about it anymore. It's, as you can see, it's still over here as part of my answer. But I start the process over again. Again, I want u to simplify things. So u is 2x, du is 2dx. The sine x dx is my dv, antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So piecing it all together. Again, we're just, this negative x squared sine x is just along for the ride now. So u times v, 2x times negative cosine x minus the integral of v, negative cosine x, times du. But now du is 2dx. So cleaning this up, still have that negative x squared sine x. I now have a minus 2x cosine x. And I brought the 2 out, and you'll notice the two negative signs made a plus. So I have plus 2 times the antiderivative of cosine x dx. Well, the antiderivative of cosine is just sine. So here we go, there's the answer. Negative x squared sine x minus 2x cosine x plus 2 sine x plus c. In other words, it's a mess. All right, I've got one more example. I'm sure it's equally fun. Give me just a minute and put it on the board. I've got one more example, and it's a doozy. So let's take a look. Here we go. I want to find the antiderivative of e to the x sine x dx. Now, the problem here is really quite simple. e to the x is its own derivative, so that's just going to keep cycling itself. And sine x is going to just go back and forth cosine. Let's see what I'm talking about. So I thought, okay, let's let u be e to the x, and dv will be the sine x dx. If I do that, then du is e to the x dx, and v is negative cosine x. And the problem is, nothing got simpler. And there's really no way to make this get simpler. Even if I made dv the e to the x and u the sine x, I'm going to have the same problem. So let's just run with this and see what happens, because it's kind of slick what happens, but it's definitely weird. So I start plugging these in, u times v, e to the x times negative cosine x minus the, anti, the integral of v du, so negative cosine x e to the x dx. Cleaning that up a little bit, uh, I brought the negative out front, so I have negative e to the x cosine x, the two minuses make a plus, and again I put e to the x in front of the cosine x dx. Now, this looks very similar to where we started. The only thing that changed is, well, I mean, other than this piece out front, but for the integral, the only part that changed is my sine is now cosine. So let's run the integration a second time and see what happens. If I let u be e to the x, du is again e to the x dx, dv then is the cosine x dx, making v the sine x, or the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So plugging it in, again, here's that negative e to the x cosine x. I have u times v e to the x sine x minus the integral of v sine x times du, which is e to the x sine x. So cleaning that up just a smidge, uh, we keep the negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x, and we still have the minus sign. I just brought the e to the x in front of the sine x dx. And the reason I did that is really Fairly straightforward, although definitely weird. That is exactly what we started with way back here. That's what we were trying to find. So I started doing this integration, and I have with, with this integral of e to the x sine x, 
and I've got it to a place where it has another integral e to the x sine x. So what I did is I wrote that all out. I wrote out where I started and where I'm at right now. And then using some very strange algebra, but algebra nonetheless, I added this integral to the left-hand side. Right? Since these two things are identical, if I add it over, I just get two integrals of e to the x sine x dx equal to this mass. If I divide both sides then by 2, I now know that the integral of e to the x sine x dx is equal to this disaster. Negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x all over 2 plus c. So there you go. That's a fun little trick. If you get into one of these ones that just wants to flip back and forth, if you can get it so your integral is the exact same thing, you can do some funny algebra to make it work out for you. So there you go. There's section 8.1. Have a good day.